In this topic, we're going to discuss the rate limiting factors in photosynthesis. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what is a rate limiting factor? What are the rate limiting factors in photosynthesis? And how do you test the effect of a factor on photosynthesis? We can look at the experiments of the effect of light intensity, temperature, and carbon dioxide concentration on the rate of photosynthesis. And then finally, we're going to look at how do you increase the productivity in agriculture. So what is a rate limiting factor? Suppose you were making burgers to fundraise. You could only make them at tea time, so you only had 30 minutes. If you had one gas stove and 20 burger patties, you could perhaps make 20 burgers easily. Unless you bought more burger patties, you could not increase the rate. So your burger patties would be your rate limiting factor. Now suppose you had 100 burger patties but only one stove. So working as fast as you could, you could perhaps make 50 burgers easily at tea time. What if you had two stoves? You would double your rate. So the number of stoves would be your rate limiting factor. Now let's have a look at rate limiting factors in photosynthesis. So remember the equation for photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light energy and chlorophyll produces glucose and oxygen. So photosynthesis is a chemical reaction. So it has a rate. What would be the ideal combination of factors for the maximum rate of photosynthesis? Well, you'd need enough light, enough carbon dioxide, and ideal temperatures. How is the rate affected if one of these factors is restricted? Well, if one of these factors is restricted, the rate of photosynthesis will be below the maximum possible rate. Okay, so what is the definition of a rate limiting factor? If a process is affected by more than one factor, for example, photosynthesis is affected by light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, the rate limiting factor is the factor closest to its minimum. Any increase in this factor increases the rate. Now, because photosynthesis involves many factors, there will always be one limiting the rate. So these factors include the number of chloroplasts, the light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, and temperature. So the different factors that we're going to discuss are light intensity, temperature, and carbon dioxide concentration. So starting off with light intensity. If you want to look at the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis, you would set up something like this, this apparatus here. You've got Elodea, which is a pond weed. It's going to photosynthesize and produce oxygen bubbles. You can collect the oxygen, or you can count the number of oxygen bubbles in a certain time period. How would you increase the light intensity? Well, you could either move the lamp towards the plant, away from the plant to decrease the light intensity, or you could add more lamps. So we'll discuss this in a little bit. So light energy has to be absorbed by chlorophyll for photosynthesis to take place. If the light is bright, do you think the rate of photosynthesis will be faster or slower? What's well, going to be faster because you're providing more light energy. Be careful because if the light intensity is too high, plant cells can be damaged. So how can we increase the light intensity? So what would happen if you move the light closer to the apparatus? Well, the distance will be inversely proportional to the light intensity, so the closer the bulb is to the pond weed, the higher the light intensity is. 
What happens if you change the strength of the light bulb? Higher strength increases the rate of photosynthesis. And then if you add more bulbs at the same distance, this will also increase the rate of photosynthesis. Now when you're recording the results, you'll have a table and then you need to plot a graph from this table. So you need to remember which the dependent or independent variable goes on the x-axis and which goes on the y-axis. So remember that the one that you are controlling goes on the x-axis. So this is your independent variable. The one that is varying according to what you're controlling, for example the rate of photosynthesis, will go on the y-axis. So if you were to plot a graph, where would the light intensity go? It would go on the x-axis and your rate of photosynthesis would go on your y-axis. So your independent variable is the light intensity and the dependent variable is the rate of photosynthesis. Now notice how the rate of photosynthesis increases with the light intensity up to a certain point. Then it plateaus. So let's discuss what's happening at each point. In the beginning, can you see how increasing the light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis. So increasing the light intensity at low light intensities increases the rate of photosynthesis. So we say that light is the limiting factor because if you increase light intensity, rate of photosynthesis will increase. Now notice how the graph starts to plateau. Here, increasing the amount of light, or the light intensity, has got no effect on the rate. The limiting factor is now something else, like carbon dioxide or temperature. Okay, let's have a look at how you could test the effect of temperature on the rate of photosynthesis. So to investigate this, we'd use exactly the same apparatus. So what do you think the independent variable will be? It's going to be temperature. You would use a range of about five different temperatures. And you can do this by varying the temperature of the water bath that your pond weed inside the test tube is sitting in. So you can use a temperature range of 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, 50 degrees. So a temperature range of 10 to 50 degrees Celsius. If you wanted to be quite accurate with the experiment, you could set it up like this. So you've got um, on the left there your light intensity, so you're going to keep that the same for all the experiments, and you've got varying temperatures. Notice how you're collecting the oxygen produced and you're going to measure the volume of the oxygen using a ruler. So what would your dependent variable be? This will be the number of bubbles produced per minute. Then there's something else called a key variable. And that's something that you need to keep constant to make a comparison between the different experiments. So what would you need to keep constant? Light intensity. If you were to draw a graph, you'd have temperature at the bottom, rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis. What do you think your graph the plot would look like. Well remember that enzymes are involved in this process so at a very high temperature enzymes will become denatured so they denature after their optimal temperature. Here you can see that as you increase the temperature the rate of photosynthesis will increase. So at low temperatures the rate of photosynthesis increases with increasing temperature so Temperature is the limiting factor. 
And then the graph drops down. This is because your enzymes are now becoming denatured. So the rate of photosynthesis will become zero eventually. Okay, finally, carbon dioxide concentration. How could you vary the carbon dioxide concentration? Well, you've got this experiment here. So this experiment has got carbon dioxide concentration as the independent variable because you are controlling it. You can vary this carbon dioxide concentration by using different concentrations of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, air has got about 0 .04 to, um, between 0 0.04 and 4% carbon dioxide in it. So you can use five different solutions of sodium hydrogen carbonate within this range. If you were to plot the graph, you have carbon dioxide concentration on the x-axis, rate of photosynthesis on the y-axis. In the beginning, when the car uh, concentration of carbon dioxide is low, what is the limiting factor there? Well, increasing carbon dioxide concentration increases the rate of photosynthesis, so carbon dioxide is the limiting factor. And then the graph plateaus. Why does it plateau? Well, at this point, increasing carbon dioxide has got no effect on the rate of photosynthesis, so another factor such as light intensity, temperature, or the number of chloroplasts becomes the limiting factor. Now, land plants are slightly different to water plants, so we just need to discuss how they're different. So in the leaves, the amount of water lost through the stomata increases in land plants at very high temperatures. So they shut the stomata to save the water. This also stops carbon dioxide diffusing into the leaf, so it will slow the rate of photosynthesis. Okay, and then finally, after all that we know, we need to use it to increase the productivity in agriculture. So if you're a farmer and you need to grow flowers or increase the productivity in agriculture, how do you think you can control the environment? Well, you could grow your crops in a greenhouse. So what conditions could you control? Well, temperature is quite easy to control in a greenhouse. So greenhouses increase the temperature. Light intensity can also be controlled, so you use artificial lighting. So in a cloudy or dark condition, extra lighting can be provided. So the light is not, the lim not limiting the rate of photosynthesis. And then carbon dioxide levels can also be controlled. So you can increase the carbon dioxide concentration to 4%. So remember, the rate of photosynthesis is increased, so plants can grow quickly, and the farmer makes more money. Okay, and finally, in summary, what have we learned in this topic? Well, we looked at a rate-limiting factor. So if a process is affected by more than one factor, the rate-limiting factor is the factor closest to its minimum. Any increase in this factor increases the rate. The rate limiting factors in photosynthesis are number of chloroplasts, light intensity, carbon dioxide concentration, and temperature. Okay, we looked at how to test the effect of a factor on photosynthesis. So we looked at the experiments of light intensity, temperature, carbon dioxide concentration. And then finally, we looked at how do you increase the productivity in agriculture. Can you remember how to increase the productivity in agriculture? Well, you can use a greenhouse and you can use artificial lighting. Make sure that the carbon dioxide levels are at the optimum, so about 4%. And 
temperature you can also control. And that concludes our lesson, the end.